your little shit back. Sign the contract, get your money, and get fucked up. Hey, greedy belly, I accept your offer. I will obliterate you. For a fight destined to crown the one true heavyweight champion, it's understandable to hear so much trash talking. After all, both Alexander Ruzik and Tyson Fury risk losing their perfect records. That's all that really needs to be said about a fight to the last man. Hailing from a proud Irish traveler lineage, Tyson Fury gained attention due to his reported 6 foot 9 inch frame. More impressive still was the dexterity he showed for such a big man. But despite his agility, Fury's foray into the pro ranks proved tricky, and some branded him as ordinary. But Fury was determined to show his worth. In 2013, he traveled to the US and took on former Cruiserweight title holder Steve Cunningham. Fury seized the moment and displayed his showmanship. I'm the best fighter on the planet, including all weight, because there's not a man born from his mother can beat Tyson Fury. I'm tall, dark, handsome, cool, calm, collected, super sexy. This guy has got no chance at all, yeah? The guys who talk a lot, they chumps. You, you talk a good game, I'm from Philly, I'm a tough guy, gangster. I'm a fighting man, fighting's in my veins, blood. From every man in my breed, seed and generation can fight. Let's go back in yours and see if yours can. Meanwhile, Cunningham's trainer, Nassim Richardson, tried his own psychological warfare. Heavyweight fighter. He's not a heavyweight. Don't he's match not yourself. a heavyweight, he's a cruiserweight. Like, I, 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 I let you speak. My thing is, if you're not a heavyweight, why would you be fighting a guy who's not a heavyweight? You say it's the best. Not another heavyweight on the planet wants to step say, in the ring. But then he you talks say about it's the best Klitschko. guy you Vladimir so Klitschko's the biggest bitch I've ever seen. He will not fight Tyson Fury. But Fury appeared to rattle the normally calm trainer. The fight for my guy is he's getting all excited. Since he's so you're criticizing for him for getting upset. And look at you. This is who I am. The fight proved dramatic as Cunningham floored the giant. Copy your box, Fury. Oh! He's not down. He's not down. Fury. Fury switched plans and crowded Cunningham. In the end, Fury tired his opponent and scored a seventh round stoppage. Here, look at this. Oh, that was another coming and he's down. Cunningham is knocked down by Fury. Tyson Fury knocking out Cunningham in the seventh. Bizarrely, Nassim Richardson attempted to get the last word. The next thing you know, he's looking up at the light. He got up and started panicking. He's like, man, I got to go for my own water and throw it. Step on his toes. I got to do whatever I got to do. I got to try to get this one. The criticism was there for Fury, as he'd been dropped by a smaller man. And some fans agreed with Richardson's assertion that Fury had only scored the win due to his size advantage. A year later, in November of 2014, Fury rematched journeyman Derek Chisora. The first meeting had ended in a decision win for Fury. This time, however, an improved Fury controlled Chisora via southpaw stance. Fury picked apart the incoming Chisora, forcing a corner stoppage. News of Fury's skill impasse had been greatly exaggerated. But was he ready for the king? Spanning a nine-year reign and 21 consecutive victories, Vladimir Klitschko had wiped out the division and was considered unbeatable. But Fury remained undaunted, as evidenced by his pre-fight antics. You call Batman. <laughs> How does it make you feel to fight for the championship? I'm like, just some personal point. It's you are used of fighting guys 6'1, 6'2, 6'3. Jab, jab, hold. You're boring. I want to rid you out of the heavyweight division. You, you, and you, next! There's a time for play and there's a time for being serious. Now, entertainment is what you saw at the press conference. People love that. People love to see that side of me. They love to be entertained. If I don't do it, who else does it? Fury even questioned Klitschko's heart by claiming he'd had lasted him during a searing sauna stay. At Matty's training camp, we're in the sauna. 
about 10 guys in the sauna and it came down to me and Vlad. Everyone starts popping off around us and it gets down to him and I'm over the other side in Is the mind. Like, was it a competition? Right, he can say what he wants, he can deny it, whatever. Who got out first? Then, prior to the bout, Fury complained about the gloves provided to him and threatened to pull out. And I mean this, if I don't fight in the right gloves, there's no fight. The tomfoolery continued when his team complained about the ring canvas, claiming it was purposefully mushy, which would curtail his movement. It's a joke. It's a trampoline. It's a trampoline. In the end, the issue was resolved and the fight occurred. The bout failed to rival the pre-fight dramatics, and the action was scarce. But Fury proved more elusive than expected, and his feints kept the champion overly weary. What little action did occur went Fury's way. Punches counted by oh, good Big shot. Left hook by Fury. In the end, he'd outboxed the greatest heavyweight of his era. But the wild ride known as the Fury Express was just beginning. Hailing from the Ukraine, Alexander Usyk reached the pinnacle of amateur boxing when he won a gold medal at the 2012 Olympics. From there, he wasted little time in clearing the cruiserweight division. In 2016, with less than 10 fights as a pro, Usyk took on the undefeated titleist Krzysztof Gowaski. In what would become the norm, Usyk fought in his opponent's territory. Despite the difference in experience, Uzik controlled the bout. But Glowaski was good enough to take him the distance, forcing the Ukrainian to display his quickness and skill. In the end, Uzik walked away with a unanimous decision. With an alphabet title in hand, Uzik traveled to the US and scored two victories. In 2017, Uzik entered the WSSB Cruiserweight Tournament, which featured the cream of the division's crop. In the quarterfinals, Uzik took on the cantankerous former titleist, Marco Huck. I looked in his eyes, that he thought he could perhaps play with me, but we're in a fight. He thinks this is just for fun. It's a fight with hard fists. It's not for amateurs. Bitch. His mood was ruined at the end. He thought he can play with me. Are you disappearing before you get a clip round the ear? Like this? Uzik punished Huck for his transgressions, stopping him in the 10th round. The fight had proved easy, but bigger challenges awaited. In 2016, Fury was mandated to rematch Klitschko. The animosity intensified. And to you, Fury. I want to say, fuck off. Seems that Vladimir has found his bollocks from somewhere and swore. Fucking hell. First of all, I want to thank everybody for coming. Does anybody else need a blowjob? Pussy. Um... But Fury would pull the rug from under the boxing world's feet when he announced his retirement. What followed was a drug and alcohol fuel loss weekend, which saw Fury balloon in weight. In his stead, there emerged the Brit, Anthony Joshua, a 2012 Olympic gold medalist. In 2017, he defeated Vladimir Klitschko in a back and forth affair. In the process, many saw him as the number one heavyweight in the world. Predictably, Fury returned in the summer of 2018 and scored two wins over some par opposition. Then, in December of that year, he took on the undefeated title holder, Deontay Wilder. 
a tall and lanky boxer, Wilder lacked Fury's boxing acumen, but he made up for it with sheer athleticism and a paralyzing straight right hand. The boxing world had clamored for Wilder to face Joshua, but instead, Wilder accepted the Fury bout. Some saw the bout as an easy layup for Wilder, and it was doubtful whether Fury would be sharp enough to evade the American's big right hand. Fury spent much of the bout sticking his jab on Wilder's face. Meanwhile, Wilder flailed with the wind. Wilder's best moments came in the 9th and 12th rounds. The 12th proved dramatic, as he laid Fury out, only for the Brit to rise. In the end, the fight was scored a draw. The decision is a split decision draw. The majority of the boxing world felt Fury had been robbed. In the minority was Nassim Richardson. How did you have the, the fight? Who did you have winning the fight? I had Deontay up slightly. Hmm. But the way I was judging, the way I knew they was going to judge him. The way I knew they was going to judge him. I didn't have him. Despite the controversy, both Fury and Wilder appeared friendly. That would quickly change. Meanwhile, Alexander Uzik remained steadfast in conquering the cruiserweight division. In the semifinals, he faced off against the undefeated titleist, Mayris Bridis. The bout proved one of Uzik's toughest. Uzik increased the tempo and attempted to beat Brady's on activity. Uzik's conditioning paid off as he finished slightly stronger. In the end, he walked away with a majority decision. On paper, the final looked to be another daunting match as he faced the undefeated Morad Gassiev. All the belts were on the line. Gassiev was a monster puncher, but the bout proved easy for Uzik as he darted around the Russian. Save for a perilous moment in the fifth, Uzik controlled the bout and won via unanimous decision. Uzik closed out 2018 by traveling to the UK as a two-con contender, Tony Bellew. The veteran proved tricky early on, but Uzik continued pressuring, and in the end, he scored an eighth-round knockout. And then he nailed the right oh! down, he goes with the left hand! Uzik had cleared out the division and now looked for riches in the heavyweight ranks. But could he compete against the behemoths that inhabited it? Entering 2019, Fury returned to the United States and easily stopped Tom Schwartz. Then, in September of that year, he took another fight in the land of the free, this time against a 6 feet 5 inch tall Odo Wallin. The undefeated Swede proved a tricky opponent. In the third, he caught Fury over the right eye. The Swede proved a worthy challenger. The cut threatened to hold the belt. He switched to his Mullen style, surging ahead on the cons. In the end, a bloody Fury left the ring with a unanimous decision. But Fury had struggled. Conversely, Deontay Wilder started 2019 by scoring an easy first-round stoppage over Dominic Brazil. But in November of that year, he looked clueless in his rematch against a 40-year-old Luis Ortiz. There, Wilder surrendered most of the rounds before bailing himself out with a big right hand. With the rematch between Fury and Wilder set for 2020, the intrigue would reach a tipping point. But there was neither excitement nor controversy in Uzik's 2019. His big move to the heavyweight division was spoiled, as he proved unable to find an opponent. In the end, he fought the unheralded Chaz Witherspoon. 
Uzik peppered his opponent without encountering much resistance. In the end, he forced a corner stoppage after round 7, and the bout had failed in demonstrating Uzik's heavyweight abilities. A major moment did occur in 2019, when Anthony Joshua traveled to the US. The move was presented as a British takeover, but things went awry when his opponent, Jarrell Big Baby Miller, tested positive for PEDs. The replacement was the underachieving Andy Ruiz. After Joshua's fast start, Ruiz returned to dominate the fight and caused one of the biggest upsets in heavyweight history. And the Wilder fans couldn't hold back their delight. Are we in the house? Oh, most definitely. Well, huh? All you dick-sucking ass niggas running behind Eddie Hearns for credentials, nigga. All right, don't be crawling up in Wilder's ass now. Don't look for Deontay Wilder to crawl up in his ass now. Are you bitches hat here behind fucking Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua? Y'all niggas some straight bitches. Y'all don't even believe in y'all fighting. All of AJ's so-called great fundamentals, being such a good technician and tactical boxer, all of that went out the window. So you can't bluff at the end of the joint, uh, yelling Wilder's name out, all right, playing games like you've been doing. Huh? You want to talk more about money? Bottom line was, AJ never wanted to fight Wilder. If you want to know why, look at this fight tonight. <laughs> Yo, yo, I can't. AJ has gone down in the seventh round. He just lost. You lost, Rock, you lost. <laughs> he ain't the cash cow no more. AJ, you were better off, get, better off getting knocked out by the king, Deontay Wilder. I bet you then he got home doing backflips and push-ups. <laughs> Cause you got your ass knocked the fuck out. <laughs> Joshua returned in November to rematch Ruiz. The champion showed up in dreadful shape. And Joshua capitalized by easily outboxing his portly foe. Joshua was back, and he peered closely at the upcoming Wilder Fury rematch set to occur in early 2020. For both Wilder and Fury, their February 2020 rematch would prove a legendary. Wilder though far from being a mainstream star, possessed a group of loyal fanatics. And though Anthony Joshua had avenged his only loss, these fans felt that he was an easy target for Wilder's bombastic right hand. And they claimed that their man was superior in all aspects to the legendary Mike Tyson. How many Hall of Famers fighters did Mike Tyson actually fight? You know, Mike Tyson, man, he was this Mike Tyson. What Hall of Fame fighters do Mike Tyson have on his resume? And what Hall of Fame caliber fighters do he have on his resume that he beat when they were in their prime? None of them. Luis King Kong Ortiz, Hall of Fame caliber fighter, man, period. You know what I'm saying? Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder got two wins over him. Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder would knock out Iron Mike Tyson in his prime. They also couldn't help but make it racial. Y'all have shown to be racist. Y'all have shown to be the absolute worst of boxing. Many of y'all reside in the same geographical locale. Y'all are rooting for a dude that is across the pond, but you have a homegrown heavyweight champion. Head movement, speed, same type of qualities that y'all, you know what I'm saying, give a few some praise to Tyson Fury and Vassal Lomachenko, non-black fighters for using the same style, a style that we invented to keep ourselves off the ropes because of our fighters was on the ropes. They would got their legs broken by blackjacks. Predictably, they also picked Wilder. Of course, I, I got Deontay Wilder winning, winning the fight by knockout. That's the easy pick. He, he, he knocked everybody out so far. I don't think Tyson Fury is going to be anything different. Wilder was equally confident he'd finish Fury off in 2020. But whereas Wilder appeared content, Fury made some much needed changes. For his comeback, Fury had hired Ben Davidson. But the man's approach was more long-range oriented, as evidenced by Fury's tactics during the first Wilder bout. Fury claimed he needed to stop Wilder and hired Javon Sugar Hill, a pupil of the legendary trainer Emmanuel Stewart. 
The intent was for Hale to perfect Fury's punching power. So now Fury had an experienced trainer leading the corner, and Fury's mantra was clear. You never stop learning as a person in life. I think when once you think you know it all, is the time you're about to fail. Meanwhile, Wilder and his team, led by JD's and former titleist Mark Breland, had a much different philosophy. The worst thing we could have done is try to reinvent the wheel. We, we thought we did win, so we're not looking to, to change everything up. We're just looking to do what we do better. My power is tremendous as always. That never goes nowhere. So why so many trainers? Why so many rotations? And still to this day, I got the same people. You don't see me firing no one. You don't see me bringing no one on. If you're supposed to be such this great fighter. Come February 27, we're gonna rip his head off his body. When I'm trying to adjust to my opponent, when I'm trying to time him, when I'm building up all the data that I need for him to, to set him up for that perfect punch. The object of boxing is to win. Not just to win rounds, but to win. And I win. Like the last time, don't blink. With both fighters talking knockouts, the animosity intensified. Don't ever forget, when I found you, you, you were strung out on coke. When I found you, you was, you was like a big house contemplating about killing yourself. So don't you ever forget who brought you to big time boxing. Being a veteran in this sport, I understand, I know. I have a sixth sense. I know what nervous energy is and what it looks like and what it smells like, pussy. I'm gonna take him, I'm gonna cut him and see how he, he feels like it. I'm gonna see if he's gonna get up off the floor. Fury would then shock the world when he weighed in at 270 pounds, an all time career high. Had he fallen into his old ways? On fight night, Fury walked Wilder down. And in the third, the demolition job began. Fury easily destroyed Wilder. Wilder and his fans were far from finished. Shortly after the Fury Wilder rematch, the pandemic halted all major sporting events until the summer of 2020. Usyk returned in October of that year, and if successful, would become Anthony Joshua's mandatory. But first, he would have to get past Derek Chisora. Standing at six feet and three inches tall, Usyk was no short heavyweight and he defeated giants such as Junior Fa and Joey Joyce at the World Series of Boxing, events which mixed amateur and professional boxing rules into their bounds. But against Chisora, Uzik would have to face a rampaging heavyweight for all 12 rounds. And at the weigh-in, Chisora showed up 38 pounds heavier than Uzik. The task did prove difficult, as Chisora jumped on the lighter Uzik. The Ukrainian appeared outgunned, but his footwork kept Chisora working overtime. Eventually, the Brit slowed down. Usyk found his timing and piled on the points. He even managed to stun Chisora. Usyk won by unanimous decision, but he'd been forced to go all out against Chisora. Former Cruiserweight champion David Hay even alleged to have heard Uzik's team claim Chisora had won the bout. Regardless, Chisora was considered a journeyman, and whereas David Hay and Dylan White had managed to stop the Brit, Uzik had failed to replicate the results. A few months later, Joshua looked sensational in breaking down and stopping Kubrat Pulev. Now, people doubted whether Uzik possessed the firepower to beat Joshua. Indeed, a Ring Magazine poll had 19 experts picking Joshua, with only two dissenters. The fight took place in September of 2021. As usual, Uzik fought in hostile territory. Unmoved by the immense crowd, Uzik started off quickly, landing his left hands. Despite his size advantage, 
Joshua was a boxer puncher, and contrary to Chizora, he attempted to outbox Uzik. Joshua had moments of success. His best rounds came in the 7th and 8th, when he worked the body. But Uzik regained his second win and finished strongly. The Ukrainian earned a unanimous decision and with three fights had become arguably the best heavyweight in the world. After having trounced Wilder in 2020, Fury encountered an unforeseen enemy. Shortly after the rematch, a slew of Wilder fans accused Fury of all sorts of devilry. First, they claimed he cheated in the first bout by loosening his glove. Former victim Steve Cunningham jumped on board the loose glove theory. But as retired boxer Ishii Smith retorted, a loose glove would have hindered Fury's performance instead of helping it. It would give him no advantage. Well, you're more chance of breaking your fingers, you're more chance of breaking your knuckles, you're more chance of hurting yourself trying to fight like this. The Wilder fans responded with insults. Another theory was that Fury had somehow manipulated his gloves in order to hit harder. The proof? His gloves had looked wrinkly. Other theories involved Wilder being poisoned, as well as his ringwalk costume being too heavy. One of Wilder's lackeys even claimed there was a doctor's report stating that Wilder's injuries indicated he'd been struck with a foreign object. Man, I got, I got physical proof that this man cheated. And it's doctor approved. Wilder would later endorse the theories and even sacked one of his coaches, Mark Breland, for having halted the bout. I highly believe you put something hard in your glove, something the size and the shape of an egg weight. Here's the reason why the side of my face swelled up in an egg weight form. It took a crab in a bucket referee and a disloyal trainer to throw the towel in just to stop me. The contract between Fury and Wilder had called for a third bout. But the pandemic disrupted the plans. Then, Fury and Joshua, by then still the champion, had agreed to a fight. But a wild arbitration ruling obligated Fury to fight Wilder. Many saw it as a waste of time, but the Wilder fans believed Fury, now allegedly exposed for cheating, would have to fight fairly, and that meant certain victory for their men. After all the talking, Wilder donned headphones seemingly wishing to avoid confronting Fury. A shirtless Fury, meanwhile, appeared confident, and he forced Wilder to engage. He accused me of everything, accused his team, his trainer, the suit. What it tells me is that he's a weak, mental little person. And he knows what he's saying is lies. And deep down in his soul, he knows that he lost. You, you haven't denied any what allegations have you done? to this point. I don't hear like any that. denial and you're getting knocked out. You don't have knocked out power. Your leg even uses. in my worst even all time, the excuses, you still, you still destroyed. hit like a... I didn't no feel one's nothing. Even... The tension grew. And one of Wilder's stooges even threatened Javon Hill. <laughs> you're going to see me again. And I'm going to see you again too. I'm going to see you again too. Face to face. Okay. And it's gonna go down in that bitch. At the Wayne, Fury showed up heavier than in the rematch, with some questioning the tactic. Meanwhile, Wilder, who a year earlier had derided Fury for switching trainers, added former victim Malik Scott as his coach. And he appeared to be taking his training with the utmost of seriousness. Get it! Wilder team continued the charade the night before the bout, claiming Fury's gloves for the rubber match lacked padding. In the end, Wilder chose a similar pair. There would be no excuses. Wilder did his best to work the body, but Fury soon resumed the job he'd started in 2020.
save for pockets of success, Wilder endured a horrific beating before Fury halted him in the 11th round. That's shown. With the dirty business out of the way, Fury looked ahead to bigger fights. In 2022, talks began of a rematch between Uzik and Joshua. But the start of the Russia-Ukraine conflict led Uzik away. Joshua, meanwhile, switched trainers, engaging the services of Robert Garcia, a coach with a reputation for carving out aggressive boxers. Joshua, who in his youth had participated in the drug running world, now adopted a more eccentric attitude, claiming he'd been too humble. Thus emerged Urban Joshua. Just let a man breathe and just hush so my mind could just see so my mind on a rock. Gonna see the raft of the new champ. Different energy, different spirit. We're going back to the raw rugged streets. That's where I belong. I followed the hustlers, the Rayful Edmund, the Jeff Ports, the Nicky Barnes, the Big Meaches, the Larry Hoovers. It's all or nothing. Music returned from the Ukraine, and a rematch was set for August 2022. fight night, Joshua appeared calmer, no longer flinching at every Uzik feint. Still, the Ukrainian remained one step ahead. Joshua made a concerted effort to target the body, but Uzik continued landing cleanly upstairs. Joshua had his best round of the night in the ninth. But Uzik regained his second wind in the tent and once again closed the fight strongly. Oh, good shot from Uzik. Oh, he's a bit open there, Joshua. And Uzik starting to really plant his feet and put the punches and combinations together. In the end, Uzik earned himself a split decision. Joshua's brain appeared unable to process the result. He decided to address the crowd. If you knew my story, you would understand the passion. I ain't no fucking amateur boxer. From five years old, that was an elite prospect from my youth, bro. Look at me. I'm a new breed of heavyweights. All them heavyweights, Mike Tyson, Sonny Liston, Jack Dempsey. Oh, yeah, you don't throw combinations like Rocky Marciano. Because I ain't 14 stone, that's why. Some Joshua fans justified their man's behavior, claiming he'd invested everything in a rematch and still failed. However, this ignored the myriad of fighters who have lost rematches without the leaders passing out. Keep it professional. What are you talking to? Hey, 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 no, talking to hey, 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 hey. Another point of contention was Glenn Feldman's score of 115-113 for Joshua. It was also revealed that Feldman had Joshua ahead five rounds to one after the sixth round. When asked to explain himself, Feldman proved evasive. Telling How did you score right five rounds to Joshua then? Just the way I did. I, mean, if you could explain how you saw seven rounds. I, I can't. You'd have to talk to my, my super. What did you like about Anthony Joshua's work in the fight? That made you score the round 7-5. I just, I just, I, I, I want to just... In any event, Usyk had walked away with a win. And now, a fury bout remained the final step. Fury, meanwhile, had started 2022 by taking on Dylan White. White had fought Joshua in 2015, when both men were undefeated heavyweights, and he'd managed to give AJ a tough fight before suffering a knockout defeat. Since then, he'd beaten an assortment of heavyweights as he hunted a big money bout. And with a fury bout secured, White now played hardball. Now he's trying to renegotiate. Now, one of the things was that he wanted a private jet to fly him in and out today, but 
We said, yes, Lee, we'll do that. In writing, we'll do that. Then they started adding other stuff to it. They didn't even want to let us use his photograph on a poster. You cannot use his image rights. Theory continued being the hype man, but his language was suspect. We, we were good friends together. We went out. We went out for a drink. We we ate together. We slept together. We, he was like he was a part of our team. No, 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 huh? bro. Oh bro, shit! We I'm sorry. We bro. slept in, in a similar surrounding, but not together, bro. Relax. There would be no such mishaps on Fight Night, as Fury easily controlled White. He concluded matters with a stunning uppercut. But Fury wasn't done with the surprises. Then I think this is it. This might be the final curtain for the Gypsy King. And what a way to go out! Few believed the announcement. And sure enough, Fury was back by the end of 2022. His opponent, however, defied belief. Fury was seen traveling Europe looking to fight strongman competitor half board Jorson. Perhaps Fury had been impressed by Jorson's grueling sparring with Conor McGregor as well as his power punching display against then lightweight champion Teofimo Lopez. Or perhaps it was his exhibition bouts that convinced Fury of his worth. Unfortunately for boxing fans, the mega fight never happened. Fury challenged Uzik after the Ukrainian's rematch with AJ. But Fury insisted to hold the bout before the end of 2022, which prevented Uzik from recuperating. Fury made the same deal to Joshua, but again, the insistence of fighting in December so close after Josh was bout with Uzik, collapsed the fight. And so, Fury settled for a December bout against Derek Chisora. Fury, it appeared, was trying to set the record for unnecessary rubber matches. Now at a different level, Fury dominated Chisora far easier than he had in 2014. And after the bout, Uzik entered the fray. I'm gonna write you off, you ugly little man! You ugly little man! Pussy! In early 2023, negotiations began between Fury and Uzik. Initially, the bout was slated to take place in Saudi Arabia, but the host later claimed their venue would be incomplete come fight night. Then, Fury's side rejected the notion of a 50-50 split. John Fury, Tyson's father, later stated that Uzik was an unknown commodity and urged the Ukrainian to fall in line. Reportedly, the next offer was a 60-40 split in Fury's favor, but the Brit allegedly countered with a 70-30 offer. Some qualified the offer as ludicrous and claimed Fury didn't want the fight. Uzik accepted the offer, but then Fury signed to Cambridge with the issue of a rematch clause, as well as a purse split in the event of a second bout. Uzik's side countered that it was Fury who initially wanted the rematch clause and claimed Fury was stalling. The fight fell apart, and half of 2023 was wasted. Uzik was now set to defend against his mandatory, Daniel Dubois. Dubois had quit in his first major bout against the division's dark horse, Joe Joyce. This after suffering a fractured orbital bone, but he remained a modern heavyweight, which meant he possessed a size advantage over Uzik, and Dubois proclaimed a willingness to do whatever it took to emerge victorious. Yeah, hit anything on side. Hit anything. Arms, <laughs> shoulders, heads, uh, you know, anything above the waist. <laughs> What's going to happen on the 26th? What are you going to do to go in there? Are you going to go in there try and break the rhythm of Usyk? How, how, did, how does it play out? By any means necessary, a win. By any means necessary. Over. Early in the fight, Usyk controlled the bout. But Dubois was throwing bricks and some of his shots were legal. In the fifth, Uzik went down. Came in at again. There's a body shot. Is that low? The referee ruled it a low blow, and the bout resumed after a few minutes. Early on, Uzik moved, but soon returned to a more aggressive style. Dubois continued launching bombs and kept working the body. But Uzik's pressure proved pivotal. And he dropped Dubois in the eighth. Dubois appeared more tired than hurt, but ultimately his punches failed to dissuade Uzik. And in the ninth, Dubois capitulated. Over. Get out of here. 
Although Uzi had been in control, he'd taken his share of damage from a bigger man. And some wondered how many fights he had left. Moreover, some fans felt as if Dubois' fifth round body blow had been legitimate. In the end, Dubois' shot had been right in the low blow zone, and its upward arc had likely shoved Uzik's cup up. Dubois' team disagreed, but their men's pre fight statements returned to haunt them. Dubois' team appealed to the World Boxing Association for some sort of reversal, but their request was denied. Lost in the drama was the fact that Dubois had quit after eating a jam. But Tyson Fury pounced on the opportunity and questioned Uzik's heart. I saw something getting said the other day. He quit. He quit like a little bitch. And what do I know? I'm only a world heavyweight champion. Undefeated for 15 years. What did you make of Usyk's performance against Dubois? I thought he lost the fight and he showed himself to be a little bitch. But I always said he was. Rolling around on the floor like a little sausage in a pan. <laughs> My belly hurts. Now feeling his oats, Fury infuriated boxing fans when he signed on to fight former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou, a 37-year-old with zero professional boxing fights. Finally, public opinion turned on Fury. He, however, was disinterested as he piled on his pre-fight antics against Ngannou. And John Fury just had to turn it into a family affair. Tyson Fury insisted he was taking the fight seriously and claimed he'd secured a 12-week training camp. He also reiterated his indifference to his critics. All those people who are sick that are making millions of dollars, massive f*** you to every one of you. And we call it, in the trade, getting paid and getting laid. But at the weigh-in, Fury clocked in at 277.7 pounds, approximately the same weight for the Wilder rubber match. And this was significant, since he'd later claimed his preparation had been subpar due to health reasons, as well as a family emergency. Had he really trained for Engano? Fury entered the fight with confidence. Fury won the first stanza, but the fight remained competitive. Strangely, Fury began clinching. Then it was wake up time. He was now in a fight. Fury's defense prevented him from tasting the canvas again, but the two Leviathans only had enough energy for brief skirmishes. Fury landed slightly more throughout the bout, but also did his share of clinching. In the end, he walked away with a split decision. The boxing world was aghast. And suddenly, Fury appeared subdued. The Brit avoided the post-fight press conference, and though he'd insisted on fighting Uzik that December, even going as far as threatening to sue the Ukrainian if he backed out, Fury now acquiesced to a February 2024 bout. During the first press conference, Fury's bravado resurfaced. Yous are all dossers. He's getting knocked out. I'm gonna bust him. Sausage, ugly little man, rabbit. He's like a little pussy with an earring in. Yeah, Shit out. But then, in early February, the bout was postponed as Fury suffered a cut during sparring. A low resolution video was later released and the lack of visible blood made some wonder whether Fury had faked the injury. Whether the theories lacked or possessed merit, their existence displayed the incredulity Fury and his antics had fermented within boxing fans. The fight was rescheduled for May, and now the Saudi backers implemented some new measures to discourage future hijinks. Fury appeared at peace with the injury, but was more upset over what Aegis Kilmas, who was his manager, had said about him. But Never call me a coward again. I've had 35 professional fights. I've been boxing 18 years of my life. And if any man calls my wife a bitch, I take his fucking teeth out. You I didn't call me? your wife a bitch. I didn't you call your wife a bitch. I, bitch. I don't do that. I don't, I don't, do, the, I don't do that shit. Well, I'll apologize hey, for that, man. Because I can't tell about my wife. Happens. And I'm no can't fucking happen. coward. Kilmans denied having insulted Fury's wife. But one had to wonder whom he'd been referring to in his initial comment. 
After seeing both men's trials and tribulations, are they still in optimal shape? Can Fury box with Uzik, or is he now too fat and complacent to deal with a professional like Uzik? Can the Ukrainian handle Fury's massive size advantage, and can he absorb the body shots that will come his way? Let us know what you think in the comment section below, don't forget to like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Tyson Fury vs. Oleksandr Usyk, Saturday, May 18th, live from Saudi Arabia, for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Rock the party, not stop like this, gonna rock the party, not stop like this.